Hi, my name is Dan, and this video is one in a series of videos I'm doing on collision and uh, collision detection and collision response in uh, Unreal. And in this particular video, I'm going to be talking about object types and blocking. Um, so let's uh, let's get a bit of an example to show what that means. <clears throat> so I've just got a standard third-person template uh, project here, and I'm going to. I don't know why I'm going around in the, in the content. I'm just going to grab a sphere out of there. And I'm going to stick that sphere above that box. And I'm going to move the player start. Uh, there's a character so that uh, when I press play, we can see that box. I'm just going to take it slides inside so that you can see past the character with the camera. Um, there we go. So that object, I'm going to click simulate physics on that so that it falls. Let's see what happens. Well, okay, the character's slightly in the way. Let's turn that slightly. We just want to be able to uh, watch that box fall. So maybe I'll just stick a 10 degree rotation there and see. That's better. We can see over the shoulder there. Okay, so as we kind of would have expect, that ball hits that box and stops moving, uh, and that's called blocking. So when the physics simulation is is enabled, when you've got the collision detection there uh, on both objects, uh, it will fall. But if they touch each other, then you'll get some kind of physics response um, because they're uh, they're not allowing the uh, the other object to, to sink. In, the ball doesn't sink inside that box. Okay. Um, so there are two kinds of collision actually going on in Unreal. Uh, one of them is the, the physics and where you block and uh, you might have a bounce, you might have some kind of uh, other response as well, but, um, uh, but basically the two objects don't overlap. But you've seen me use uh, collision boxes to overlap if you've been watching any of my other, my other videos. Um, where you detect, you have an invisible box, and you detect when the player steps inside the box. And that's uh, an object which is set to overlap rather than to block. Okay. And then there's a third setting, which is to have none, so uh, for neither an overlap or a block to happen. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to have a look at the collision settings in the end. There's various things we can, uh, we can have. Um, simulation generates... It's events. Well, we're not going to worry about the events. I'll do that in, a, in the next video. Um, but we are going to worry about whether the physics uh, is going to allow it to block or not. Um, and the collision preset, uh, presets here um, will determine what will block and what will not block. Um, and we've got two objects at play here. We've got this physics, uh, physics actor. So this has been set to have the normal responses of a physics actor. Um, and that's because we enable physics on it. And the other thing, the box, has been set to default, which is uh, basically we know it's not moving, but it's going to, it's going to um, detect blocks and do blocking. Okay. So I just clicked on there and the other one. There's loads of different settings in here. In here, You can ignore all, you can block all, you can overlap all. Um, and if we uh, switch our box to overlap all, let's just see what happens. The ball drops through it. So it allows the, the ball in. It will generate an overlap event if, we, if we're getting it to do that. Um, but again, we're not bothering about the events right now. Uh, but the one that I want to look at is custom. So there are lots of different objects, and you'd need to kind of delve into them more if you want more detail here. Uh, I just want to give a quick uh, overview of this. So I'm going to set that to custom, and I'm going to get the ball as well, and I'm going to set that one to custom. Um, and when you set them to custom, it enables this area down here with the, with the different choices. And we're going to look at these different, under the object responses, these different choices here. So at the moment, they're all set to block. And also the object type of this object, I said it's um, a physics body, and that's been uh, determined by the fact that I enable physics on it. 
uh, we could actually fake a change to this if we wanted to. So the uh, the th the most used ones are world static, uh, world dynamic physics body, and pawn. And the player characters are pawn. Um, so we'll leave that as a physics body, and we'll click on that box. And that's a world static. So it's a, an object in the world which isn't going to move around. Um, the point is that it, it stays stationary in the world. Um, and we we previously set this to overlap all, so it's it set all of these to overlap. Um, but we're going to uh, set them back to here. And in fact, the collision enabled, we need to change this as well because that has been changed by setting it to uh, uh, overlap all, uh, to query only. So that gives you a query, gives you an overlap. No collision gives you nothing at all. Um, physics only will give you uh, collision, uh, give you blocking, but no overlap. Uh, collision enabled, physics and query is what we're going to leave it on. And we're just going to check that the ball has, is set to that. Uh, so that's set to collision enabled, query and physics. So the, the two things you need to uh, uh, make sure are there are that your object type is what you want it to be and that your collision enabled is how you want it to be. And if in doubt, set it to the bottom one which is both, because then we're going to set individual settings here uh, for what will overlap and what won't. So at the moment, it's saying, so this is the ball that we've got selected. It's saying when it meets a world static, it'll block. And the box is saying when it meets a physics body, it will block. Okay. Um, with the box, we're just going to set pawn to overlap there. So it's changing it for one type of object and not for others. And uh, that's the uh, the uh, third person character here is a pawn. Uh, so if you click play, those two should still block each other. But if I run my character in here, you can see the character is actually... Uh, that camera's a bit odd, isn't it? Okay. I'm able to run inside there. And I've knocked the ball off. Um, okay. And that might be something to do with this uh, these camera settings here. So let's have a quick play at those and see if we can uh, set those and if that makes a change. Yes, that makes it easier to see what's going on. So the character can overlap. But the ball is still set to block with that box. Oh, I play that again. There we are. Okay. Now, if we set the box so that for a physics body it is overlap, or in fact ignore, if I ignore and show you that, then the ball will fall through because it's going to ignore that, whatever the settings are on that. So it will take, when they're in custom, it will take the least response setting as the as the default one out of the two because it needs to check both of them. So what we're going to do is going to set the box back to just to prove this. Set the box back to block and get hold of the ball and set that so that it ignores uh, world statics. Um, in fact, it overlap world statics. Uh, world statics, and we're going to do it with the pawn as well so that. And we can walk through the ball. So the ball goes down through there, and I'm not kicking the ball anymore uh, with the character. And if we set that back to pawn to be block, we should be able to kick that ball out of there. Uh, <clears throat> I was hopeful, um, but it doesn't seem to have worked. I wonder why that is. Um, I, I'm caught on the hop here. I was expecting it to behave in one way, and it didn't behave in that way. I'm just going to move this ball over so that it falls outside and check that. Ah, of course. I hadn't thought about that. The ball isn't inside the um, the box. It's fallen all the way through. So that explains that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try and get that 
situation where the ball drops through the box but still stays on the ground. Uh, and we can do that by taking this uh, box, which is set to a world static. So the floors also, of course, are world static, or it should be. Where's its um, collision? And um, office. Yeah, it's set to default, but it is a world static. Um, let's create, make this a different type. Let's call this a world dynamic, as if it can move. And then we're going to set the ball so that it's. Um, where's the ball? Set the ball so that it blocks world statics, but it will drop through a world dynamic. And it blocks the ball, so I should be able to kick it out through. And it is partially embedded in because I didn't put it all the way back. But now, of course, I can push it. So that demonstrates that. The, the thing that I, I hesitate to start on is looking at all these other different settings other than custom and how they interact with each other. Because it's not true that if we set, so if we set uh, this ball to block all, on this box, so to, to ignore world dynamics, uh, we might get a different response here. So we're on custom here, I'm gonna set the ball to block all. I'm gonna set this box, it's still on custom, um, and I've, I'm gonna set it so that it should let uh, a physics object drop through. And does it? No. So the block all is taking priority in this case. Um, and I don't know the ins and outs of what takes priority where in all those different settings. There's quite a lot of different settings. So you would need to play around with them to, to find out uh, what is going on there. I think the message is if you want to take complete control over this, then uh, you should uh, set everything to custom and manage it through that process. Anyway, in the next video in this series, I'm going to talk about... Uh, uh, events that happen as a result of blocking and overlapping and how you can respond to them. Uh, but that's it from me for now.